Hey y'all, so this is an impromptu video. I am not, you know, just woke up and I really just have to do this video because the enemy is really playing games. Um, I'm just going to say a quick prayer and let God just have his way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for what you have in store for us in this video. I pray, God, that it will be all you speaking through me. I pray that my flesh will not get in the way. God, I pray that your will would be done on this video as it is in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, y'all. So, um, I'm just, I'm, this is not going to be a long video. I'm just going to say what it is, encourage y'all, and pray. So, um, the enemy is really trying it. As I said, probably in my past videos, God is doing a new thing, but you have to understand that the enemy is not happy. He does not want us to have freedom. He does not want us to be delivered, and he does not want us to be blessed. So he is working overtime to make sure that we are discouraged and we stay in the wilderness. We stay in the place that God is freeing us from. So that's what the wrong one this morning. Um, as you guys know, in my testimony, um, the spirit of lust is something that I have dealt with a lot in my life. If you don't know the story, go back and watch those videos. Um, but recently, I've been good. I've been, I've been good. Um, but two days ago and today, I've been having some intense sexual dreams. Now, a lot of people don't come on here and talk about this, but I'm going to be upfront because we have to be free. The enemy is attacking us in every way possible. If you think about um, the wilderness, where Jesus was in the wilderness, the enemy came to tempt him in the wilderness because he was at that point where he was weak, he was hungry, he was thirsty. That was an opportune time for the enemy to test him. The enemy is testing us in our sleep. He's attacking us with dreams to try and get us back into the sins that God has already set us free from. He's tempting us at our weak points, whether we're fasting or whatever it may be. You may have a weekday where you wake up and you feel all sorts of stuff in your body, all these things that you, you feel like, oh God, I, you delivered me from this. Why am I feeling this right now? It's because you are weak. The enemy, <laughs> he roars a lot around like a, he, ro he, oh man, I'm feeling this. I'm sorry, y'all. He roams around waiting and looking for who he can devour. The enemy is so weak that he waits until we are in a weak state so that he can overcome us. That just shows you how much power you have when you're on fire and you're strong by the power of Christ. But anyways, yeah, so the enemy has given me these really intense dreams. And today I woke up, I sat here. And I was, when I woke up, I was just in shock. I'm just like, why is this happening? Like, God, what did I do wrong? Like, what is going on? Right. And I was, I was just, I was just not, I was not, I was so discouraged. I'm just like, I felt so defiled. Like for those of you who have went through this, you know how defiled and disgusted you feel. You wake up and you're just like, yo, like, what did I just do? What, what, what just happened in my dreams? But I couldn't even get up to pray because it's just like this is something I used to deal with like frequently, frequently. I prayed, I renounced, I rebuked, all that. And the fact that it was still coming, it was just like in my mind, God, you said you freed me from this. Why is this attacking me right now? Especially in this season when you're trying to do something new. Why do old things keep coming up? And for some of you, it might be in your mind. You may be tempted in your mind with things that God has delivered you from. You may have thoughts and memories that try, try to keep you down. You may wake up feeling depressed. You may wake up feeling anxious. Your fear may be on a whole nother level. The enemy knows that his time is short and he's trying to discourage you. He's trying to, he's coming after your faith. That's what the enemy wants. He doesn't want just, he doesn't want, who he doesn't want just your life. He doesn't just want you to fall into pornography or lust. He wants your faith in Jesus because he knows what that faith in Jesus is going to do for your generation, for your family, for your children. He's coming after your faith in God. So he's trying to come up with all these things from the past and show you, oh, you're not really free. Oh, you're not really delivered, but stand strong in faith. He's distracting you because he knows that his time is limited. He knows that God is about to do something new in your life. And he wants you to forsake the new because of what you see. He wants to fill your life with so many experiences and so many things that contradict the word of God over your life. But let me tell you something today. What the enemy has planned for evil, God will use for good. The enemy really thought he was going to attack me in my dreams and I'm going to wake up and I'm just going to be depressed throughout the whole day and I'm not going to, because I didn't want to pray. Because I'm just like, God, you delivered me from this. Why am I going through this again? I sent a message to my pastor. He prayed. I'm on fire. 
the enemy really thought that he was going to send this dream and destroy me and cause me to fall back into pornography or lust or whatever it is he had planned but what the enemy planned for evil god turns for good god allowed the enemy to test job but after that trial job came out with a double blessing than what he had before before jesus started his ministry and he was stepping into the new season of his life the enemy tried to tempt him tempt him as his, at his weakest point so he can give up we don't have a high priest who does not understand our suffering and our trials he went through it he got the victory over the enemy on the cross so that we can walk in that victory the enemy will do everything that he can to try and deceive you and make you feel like you're not free that you're not delivered that you'll always go through this but let me tell you something today i'm here today i went through this today god allowed me to go through this today to let you know that it doesn't matter how many times the enemy attacks you god is faithful and his word is true and it will come to pass but will you have faith the enemy is after your faith he is attacking your faith he wants you to not believe in what god said because of what you see and experience so let the warrior arise in you when the enemy comes against you and he tries to make you feel like oh these things god has not really set you free from these things get up and pray when you don't feel like you can pray get up and pray He's coming against your faith for a reason because he knows that if you continue the way that you're going, continuing to have faith in God, continuing to fight and stand for purity, the enemy knows that it's not just going to bless you, but it's going to bless your generation. I'm going to read a couple verses. Now I'm be done with this because this is really improv too. But um, I'm not going to read all of it. But when you go through numbers, where is it at? numbers 22 to i believe 23 in your own time just go ahead and read that but it talks about um balan who's basically a prophet and balak 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 whatever he was let me see he was a moabite king and he was afraid of the israelites and he got balam to basically curse the israelites and he tried to curse the israelites three times but he couldn't. Each time, instead of cursing the Israelites, he blessed them. There's a verse in the Bible also in Isaiah. Let me go there really quickly. Isaiah 50. Isaiah 54, yeah. Isaiah 54, verse 17. It says, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised to accuse you. These are the benefits enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from you. I, the Lord, have spoken. There's no one who can curse you. The enemy cannot bring anything into your life, anything into your mind, anything in your dreams. His weapons against your faith will not prosper. Because the God you serve is faithful. When he says that you're delivered, when he says that you're set free, it's the truth. But the enemy will do everything in his power to make you believe that God is a liar. That's the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden, and that's the same thing he's doing now. He doesn't want you to have faith in God because he knows what that faith in God brings into your life. But it says here that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against you shall be put to shame. This is the benefits of those who serve the Lord. One last verse and then I'm gonna end out. Okay. There's no word that one more. I think it is first Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter ten, verses twelve to thirteen. And it says, If you think you are standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life are no different. Sorry, the temptations are in your life are no different from what others experience. But God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. God will not allow the enemies to tempt you or attack you or torment you if he knows that the enemy is going to defeat you. What good father is going to allow 
his child to be defeated and destroyed. The thing is, we see things through our earth leader's perspective. We see things on a surface level. We see, oh, the enemy attacked me in my dreams. Oh, I'm still having lustful thoughts. Oh, these things are attacking my mind. And we think of it on a, a surface level perspective of I am not free. But God allowed it for a reason. He's a good God. He's a faithful father. He won't just allow things if he knows it's going to destroy you. He sees the other side of it. Take it for example. I just got attacked in my dream. And I'm waking up thinking, God, why would you allow me to go through this? I feel so disgusting. I feel so defiled. But he saw this video. He saw that I was going to get on this video and speak freedom and deliverance to you guys. So he allowed me to go through that torment so that I can be on fire to pray. So that I can be on fire to speak into other people's lives so they can be free. Understand this. If a, if the end, huh, if God allows the enemy to come and do anything in your life, there is a reason. And the end of that, the end of that is a blessing. The same thing for Job. God allowed the enemy to take everything from Job. But the end of that was a double blessing. God allowed Jesus Christ to die on the cross, but the end of that was eternal glory. God will now al not allow the enemy to destroy us. He allows us to go through things so we can, <clears throat> listen, he allows us to go through things so he can test our faith, so we can grow, so we can be stronger. How can you be a warrior and a conqueror if you never have to fight a battle? How can you be a conqueror if you never have to conquer something? How can you say you really love Christ if you're not put to the test? How can you have faith unless there's something to come against it? It's easy to be faithful to God when everything is good. But when the enemy comes against you, are you going to stand strong? Those who endure to the end shall be saved. So yeah, I just came on here to just to say that. That it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do or tries to say, or tries to allow you to experience. If God says you are free, you are free. If he says you are blessed, you are blessed. If he says you're delivered, you're delivered. No matter what happens in your dreams, no matter what happens in your sleep, no matter how many attacks you get, no matter how, how depressed or anxious you feel in your mind, the enemy knows that his time is up and he's trying to attack you by all means necessary. Do not forfeit your blessings. Do not forfeit your freedom. Do not forfeit your deliverance because of the lies of the enemy. Because I'm promising you this. That God, everything that the enemy has planned for evil, God will turn around for good. He knows the plans he has for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. We have to trust what he says. We have to trust that he is faithful to his name. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And the enemy knows that. So he's coming after your faith so you won't be free. So that your children won't be free. So that your husband won't be free. Your wife won't be free. Your family won't be free. But let me tell you this. The enemy has already lost. By Christ dying on the cross, he has already given us the victory. And the enemy knows that. But he wants to trick you and deceive you into thinking that God is a liar. So continue to have faith, continue to stand strong. If the enemy knocks you off your boot, remember that you are a conqueror, you are a warrior. Get up and pray. Even when it's hard, get up and pray. Seek God fast. Don't give up because you are so close to the new thing that God has for your life. So yeah, this video is already too long than what I wanted it to be. But I just had to come on here and say that. I'm just going to say a quick prayer and leave it at that father in the name of jesus we thank you for today god we thank you that you are a faithful father you are so good god that even the evil things that the enemy tries to attack us with is meant for our good god we thank you that the enemy cannot do anything to destroy our faith god because you are with us your rod and your strap they comfort us god i thank you that you are so powerful and you are so great and you are so big god you are greater than anything that comes against us god even in our weakest moments you take the things that the enemy planned to destroy us and you use it to bless us i thank you for everyone who is watching this video 
And I pray, God, that you will give them the strength and the grace to stand strong, God, when the enemy tries to attack them with fear, with lust, with anxiety, with depression, whatever it may be that they're going through. And I pray that you will grant them freedom. Everything that the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy in their life, God, I pray for a double blessing in that area, God. I pray that you will not just save them, but save the people around them, God. I pray that you give them double things of everything that the enemy tried to steal from them, God. If it's their faith, if it's their purity, if there's if it's their sanity, if this is sound mind, if it's their peace, if it's their joy, I pray that you will give them a double portion of everything that the enemy has stolen and everything that they have lost. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will build them to be the warrior that you call them to be and give them the grace, God, to walk in the victory that you already died for them to win. I thank you for your faithfulness and your mercy. I thank you because you are a good, good father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So yeah continue to fight continue to fight for your victory for your freedom because it's already yours don't let the enemy lie to you don't be deceived it has your name on it so yeah see you guys in another week